Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In your 2023 U.S. Attorney Investor speech, you highlighted the challenges you believe America faces and what justice means. You said, quote, we're experiencing a long overdue reckoning with racism in the criminal justice system. Mr. Ritz, what part of the criminal justice system needs a long overdue reckoning? Senator, what I was describing were a number of things that have happened in recent years in this country that framed, I would say, in some ways, the work that we do in the U.S. Attorney's Office. Um, is the American justice system systematically racist? That is not a sentiment that I hold. Uh, to the degree there is a definition of what being systematic, systematically racist means, um, I understand some individuals have pointed to disparities, um, and sentencing and that type of thing, um, but that's not a view that I have. So that's not a view that you have. That's, that was your testimony. Well, you also said, quote, there cannot be one rule of law for people who look like me and another for people of color. That sure sounds like the view you just said you didn't have. I, Do you believe that's our system, that, that our justice system has one rule of law for people that look like you and one rule, a different rule of law for people of color? No, what I said is that absolutely we cannot have one rule of law for people who look like me and another for people of color. We cannot have one rule of law for the powerless and another for the... There's just one rule of law. That's what I, that's what I said. You also said, when asked if the criminal justice system is systematically racist, you said, quote, there are structural barriers and disparate outcomes that communities of color experience in our society, separate and apart from any individual's views or intentions. Now, that again seems to be saying the same thing that you're saying you weren't saying. I'm just trying to understand what your views are. And Senator, um, that was my attempt in that written question to grapple with again what was being asked by systematic racism. I understand some have pointed to structural barriers, and disparate outcomes. So, have, so what are the barriers and outcomes you're referring to? I can think of one uh, prominent example that I've had some experience with, which is the disparity in cocaine sentencing between crack sentencing and powder sentencing. This body has addressed those disparities on multiple occasions, and um, that has been, as I understand it, um, something that uh, people have, have addressed as a, as a result of disparities. Okay, you, you also said in responses to questions for the record that as the Attorney General has explained, everyone has implicit biases. So, so what are your implicit biases? Senator, I understand implicit bias to refer to unconscious bias that exists below the level of consciousness, and so to the degree I have implicit biases, I, I think we all do. I, I, I think that's partly the point. Is so I don't every, know. everyone's a racist whether they know it or not? And that's... I would say that everyone might have implicit biases, and I don't know what... So what's the difference between bias and prejudice? I think there's, there can be a lot of overlap in those things. It depends, I think, on the context. So you're saying everyone is prejudiced? That's not what I said, Senator. You just said everyone has implicit said, biases, and you said that bias and prejudice, I think your words were, there's a lot of overlap. I think that's right, and I understand implicit bias, and I'm not an expert on the subject, to refer to a... Uh, set of um, biases that may exist beyond, under a conscious level. So, since you talk about the, these implicit bias issues, have you taken a, a so-called implicit bias test? Uh, we received training that was put on during the last administration in our office on implicit bias. I attended that training in our office. And what, did, did you take a test? I don't believe there was a test associated with that, Senator. Okay, you also said, quote, but you should know that for justice, for me, is, more, is about more than putting people in prison. For me, it's also about who votes and how hard it is to cast that vote. It's about where pipelines or bus routes go. Justice is about whether people in all zip codes can get a loan, whether women have access to health care. That's an interesting statement, and, and in reading it, what's striking is, is that that's de-emphasizing the core role of a U.S. attorney. The, the last I checked, a U.S. attorney is not in the policy business of deciding where pipelines go. That's, that's the role of environmental activists and left-wing activists, but is not supposed to be a U.S. attorney. Um, 
why was your focus elsewhere? Senator, and the very next thing I said was that those are not issues that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis in the U.S. Attorney's Office where we are primarily focused on enforcing criminal laws. I was seeking to place you know, justice as a broad concept at the center of, you know, put, to place our work within justice as a broad concept. So but we, do you agree that Memphis is one of the most dangerous cities in the nation? It is. Uh, we have an, uh, an intolerable amount of violent crime, and that's why there's no higher priority for us in our office. Well, there's no higher priority except for pipelines, except for bus routes, except for uh, bank loans, except for implicit bias, except for the fact that everyone is prejudiced, all of those other things are what you're focused on talking about instead of actually locking up bad guys who are murdering and raping and hurting people. In those same comments, Senator, I said that we don't apologize for seeking significant prison sentences, and that's at the core of what we do when we have serious violent crime, we seek serious sentences and consequences. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cruz, and thank you, Mr. Ritz. So we appreciate your being here. You may have received some questions mm -hmm. in writing. If you'll respond in a prompt fashion, we'd appreciate it very thank much. Thank you. We now make room for the second panel.